Welcome to TVBS Meeting Room, where we tackle global issues with a view from Taiwan. I'm your host, Wen Chi Yu. Today, we're so pleased to have Fritz Demopoulos with us. Um, Fritz, welcome. Hey, Wen Chi, how are you? Good, good. So Fritz, you um, have been a fascinating figure. Um, so you run one of the most successful online travel platforms in the world, Trunar, and you are also investing in uh, early stage companies globally, including quite a few in China. Right. And you also sit on the listing committee of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, uh, also a philanthropist. But tell us what's going on in China. You've lived there for about 25 years, including Beijing and Hong Kong. What's the business environment like? Well, I think um, China always presents us fantastic opportunities as investors, operators, entrepreneurs. Um, of course, it goes in waves, and there's a lot of complexity these days, new regulations and laws and some geopolitical considerations. Um, but, but Everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything, but, you know, but, but that's what happens with, you know, you can argue, is it the world's largest market, probably, or the second largest, for sure? Yeah. And the, the, any, t any time something is big, it's just going to have it. It's going to be affected by, bit, right. by many factors. Right, right. And so um, a lot of people feel like the economy is not doing well. And, you know, the question is, will things change after the 20th Party Congress, in your view? Well, I'm glad that you asked that question. Um, I guess to paraphrase from um, Manaj from um, Templeton yesterday, yeah. actually, he was, yeah. he, he was I, I, I thought he made a, a really good point, is there's always a balance between on one hand, social stability and reform and some of the things that uh, the senior leadership in Beijing want to promote, and then growth on the other. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit of a trade-off. And obviously, the last few years, we've seen uh, reform seem to be front and center in the policy agenda right. of, 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 of those in Beijing. And maybe after the Party Congress, maybe that'll shift a little bit more towards growth again, especially given the slowing economy and the demographic shift. And maybe a few other factors, and 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 my gut tells me is over the over the coming years there will always be that calibration be um, uh, with reform and stability on one side, and maybe growth on the other. It's a balancing act for them, for sure. Yeah, and um, but how quickly do you think the economy will bounce back? I think it's going to uh, take a little bit of time. Um, globally, mm -hmm. ob obviously with inflation and course driven mostly by uh, the cost of energy mm -hmm. and uh, the uncertainty in Eastern Europe obviously um, well, even in Southeast Asia as well in places like Myanmar too mm -hmm. um, so I, I, th I think there's just a, a, a lot more uncertainty and maybe the markets just need to take a, 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 a deep breath um, and the overall economy and um, consumers want to spend I think mm -hmm. um, but they're also a little bit more cautious um, there's a large concern about debt levels. And it's when things are booming and money is cheap, yep. uh, we're all beneficiaries of that as mm -hmm. consumers spend more. And are, 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 are we in a, another recalibration phase where maybe cons, uh, consumer debt and corporate debt and, of course, government debt um, in China, could it be too high? And mm -hmm. there needs to be a small adjustment, and that might um, slow down growth in the short term could be it mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. i think um a lot of people feel like it's really hard to read china like there's always going to be those who are more optimistic about china and then there you know those who are pessimistic about china's future um what's interesting over the last few years is that i think hong kong has been sort of part of the conversation rather than just a separate place um, and you've lived in hong kong for the last 10 years what has changed in Hong Kong? Well, a lot's changed. <laughs> um, where, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, we had a, a a large amount of social unrest a few years ago, mm -hmm. um, and then during the pandemic period, which hopefully we're coming out of, a big hope. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the policy, when is it effective? Zero plus three is like... I think it's, it's already kicked in. Okay. So if I want to fly back tomorrow, yeah. I can. Great, so um, you don't have to be quarantined. Um, that's in right. In Penny Bay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Um, and, but, 
you know, some of those things, on, on one hand, the social unrest, and then the, um, and of course, the, and, and, and the results of that, including the national security law mm -hmm. and, and, and a range of other things, um, and then COVID, and then the exodus of a lot of um, international talent. Mm -hmm. You know, that I think has changed the dynamic of the city a little bit. Um, I do think there's probably an overreaction. I, I, th I think Hong Kong is still going to be an incredible international hub, mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm very optimistic. Um, but, you know, who said that we have to be uh, the only international hub? That's an interesting point of view. I think a lot of people, especially those in the West, look at Hong Kong um, as an indicator of how China's economy is going to look look like, right? Especially sort of Hong Kong is sort of the, the windows or the doors into, you know, the greater uh, mainland China. And now there's some question about whether Hong Kong can continue to play that role, especially in the financial sector. And how do you feel about that? Well, I think um, you, 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 you never want to be just a gateway. You know, that's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the Singaporeans for years are saying, we're the gateway to China. Your friends no. in Taiwan are yeah. saying, we're the gateway to China. <laughs> people in Hong Kong, we're the gateway to China. There's a bunch of people in Shanghai. No, 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 we're the gateway to China. Right. Come to Shanghai. We're the right. head of the dragon. That's what they right. say about Shanghai. Right. Um, and so I, I'm, I don't know so much about, you know, this idea of, of a gateway. I mean, I feel if you want to do business in China, you have just to go be to Beijing. Just go to Beijing. Oh, you don't have okay. to go. I mean, you can go to Hong Kong too. I mean, Hong Kong has a lot of resources and talent. Um, and, of, and of course, we have the financial markets, and the financial industry is very, very well developed. Mm -hmm. One of the um, best. Yeah. It is. I mean, our, I mean, you know, in some year, in many years, uh, more capital is raised through the Hong Kong market than any other exchange in the world. Um, Do so you think Beijing wants to keep Hong Kong that way? I think so. I mean, why not? I mean, I, I think it's a source of, of international capital mm -hmm. um, that can be, and, and, and since Hong Kong is a part of China, um, it, it's probably easier to, to, uh, to influence than, say, the NASDAQ or New York or mm -hmm. London would be, mm -hmm. or Singapore for that matter. Mm -hmm. Well, over the last few years, and even at this conference, what we're seeing is that a lot of expats have left. Uh, Hong Kong for Singapore and I've heard that some may consider moving back to Hong Kong um, That's What's right. the rivalry like between Singapore and Hong Kong these days? I mean, I, I just who I do mean, you bet on? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's I'm, I don't know if it's a zero-sum game to be honest I mean, I mean, I think Singapore is a great city. It's mm -hmm. a great country um, and Hong Kong is a great semi-autonomous region, I mm -hmm. guess um, and, you know, I mean, but there's, I mean, come on, there's no comparison, right? I mean, Hong Kong is 30 times uh, the size of Singapore in, in terms of its financial markets and liquidity. I mean, I mean, th there is yeah. no comparison when it comes to the financial industry. Um, I, th I think Singapore does well, I think, on money management and, and you know, in, in some of those areas, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's good. I mean, but, you know, what we find is two or three players, I mean, in fact, maybe we need a third international center within the region because then I think it where would that be I don't know where it could be but I mean you know maybe in KL or maybe Shanghai or 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 or, or maybe Tokyo will be a little bit more international mm -hmm. and, and 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 I think that's just a creative I think it just adds to you know the I, th I think the overall wealth and so I I, I, I don't look at it um, as a zero-sum game I do think Hong Kong is well positioned we have a lot of talents um, we have laws mm -hmm. that, especially security laws um, and professional laws and all that sort of stuff that I think leads to an ecosystem that's very investor friendly, it's very transparent, investors have a lot of confidence in the city and so we feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Um, now, shifting to what you do in the rest of your time, um, you're a philanthropist yourself. Um, tell us sort of your philanthropic uh, philosophy. What, why do you think it's important to give back to society and in what areas? Well, I mean, we certainly think about philanthropy in a few ways. One way is we like to support the community we live in. 
but in also Hong Kong. Yeah, in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So we like to support Hong Kong and make Hong Kong. Yeah, there's Kong a lot of. I, I think a lot of people used to think sort of Hong Kong is this very rich, you know, wealthy community, but in reality, there's a lot of, you know, the sort of underserved communities as well, right? And it wasn't that sort of one of the sources of unrest um, the last few years. It's true that the, uh, I think the middle class has uh, suffered quite a bit in Hong Kong. Um, and, but, you know, every city or every country has other needs too. There's, as, as um, from a philanthropic perspective, mm -hmm. people in need, but also sometimes um, building and developing the arts and culture sector is important too. That adds to the quality and, and the, the quality of life of the mm -hmm. city as well. Um, and so there's a range of different things that we think about. Um, and, and so, so you also give back to the engineers and, you know, especially female and engineering education. Is that right? Yeah. So a big part of what we do is we try to encourage um, women to pursue other sciences. Yeah. Young women. Um, and through scholarships and other programs, lab work, and things like that. And of course we do that in many places in the world. Um, and so I, I, I wanted to mention, we try to support our local community, but we also try to support where we're from too. Um, that obviously coming from the United States, I've been a beneficiary of many of the institutions in the United States, and I, w I would like to support them and give back. But at the same time, we also want to support where we live too. So, 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 so we want to do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. and, and one of our key tentpole strategies is to um, support um, young women uh, to pursue uh, careers in the sciences. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for having uh, this conversation with us. Um, so, you know, wish you the best of luck, uh, whether it's starting the next business as an investor or as a very successful philanthropist. Well, thanks, Wenxi, and thanks, uh, TVBS. Thank you.